I have no idea what happened. No! Guys, <laughs> I don't know what happened. My phone just shut out of Instagram for some reason and cut Kelsey off. I'm so sorry. Let's get her back here. Ugh, that's so upsetting. But I do know that somebody from Kelsey's team was just screen recording all of that. So um, that was so weird. Was mine the only Instagram that just like shut off? Okay. <laughs> Did your Instagram so just like shut yeah, off? Yeah, my phone just like force closed. Everything Same. was gone. Yeah, very strange. Okay, okay. I, I didn't know if that was just me. I was scared that was just me too. I hope because I know that your person was um, screen recording that, so I'm hoping. It yes, I think we do. Was have okay. It, okay. So. Um, but yeah. I was anyways, saying, like, the fitness industry is bullshit. Yes, that's what we were talking about. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and and not obviously, I I think the ways that fitness has been packaged and sold for a long time has been wrong and it's been very centered around what you look like and especially towards women quite frankly that how you are is not right or not enough and that's just wrong and i'm so so stoked that we live in 2020 and one of the positives of 2020 is that there are a lot of badass women working to change that yeah and you're one of them and i'm one of them and there is a lot of body positivity and there are a lot of us choosing to stand up right now and say hey this is actually wrong you don't need to be fixed there's nothing that you need that needs to be changed. So you like stretch marks, all this is totally normal and not ugly and nothing wrong with it. And Hey, you need to exercise because you're a human being in your life. So you have health and you got to take care of your health. Yeah. And it's all about that. And the more you do, everyone's like, how though, how do I start to love myself? How do I start to go, you know, and like, it's so hard to start, but honestly, and I used to think about that forever being like, how do I, really explain and then it came to me and I'm like it's so simple you start to love yourself by treating yourself with love the action has to be first mm -hmm. you can't just like think your way into it if you get up and like every day just do something to care for your health whether yeah. that's meditation mental health whether it's exercise whether it's I'm choosing, say it. you know good nutrition I'm gonna say it right say now it. I it. woke up and I did power at home legs and abs I'm so proud of you. What week? So I told you the other day I had to like start. So the problem is let's, let's just talk about it now. Oh yeah. So, hey, we're going to, we're going to okay. call you out right now. Well, listen, I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. I don't think you do. <laughs> okay. Tell me let, what am I going to say? So I am constantly com complaining to Kelsey and, and being hard on myself about the fact that I, have never made it past 12 weeks. Like I've never, I've never been that person who's gotten to like, oh, I hit my 24th week. Like, yes, I've been doing. How your... many weeks have you done, Katie? I mean, like probably collectively, I've done a lot of weeks. They just haven't been. Okay, so you've consistent. easily done 40 weeks of power. Who cares if it's weeks one through four, one through four? Who cares? Like you have been consistent. If we, I'm sorry, but if you go back to when we started being friends a couple years ago, you have slayed it. You have gone through more months of, like, you have been so good at taking care of your health and it's, wellness. It's the comparison every thing. Season. It's the comparison and thing that we're ridiculous. getting back to. And it's like, you yeah. know, I look at all of these, like, badass women that I'm, like, so inspired by that you post and, you know, the sweat app posts that's, like, Oh, congrats on a year of power. And I'm like, well, technically I've done yeah, a year of you power have. too, but you have. it's been like, I did like weeks one through six really it consistently and then life gets in the way and I get That's it. Like we talked about the other day, I need to like give myself permission to be human. Things come up, things are going to happen. And it's like, it's you're always only, saying, you don't need to give yourself permission to be human. You need to be proud of yourself. It's not like you are just human and so, yeah, you've fallen off. It's okay, though, because you're human. No, you are – of all my friends, you have always been a steady example of true self-love and self-care. 
what you do and your life is not normal and it's extremely demanding physically, mentally, emotionally. And I know that you've shared a lot about that with me, but if you don't mind me saying to everyone, this woman works so hard (laughs) and she does it because you care about what you do. And the messages in your show are so important to women, especially in this generation, but it's not easy. And just because you love something and you're passionate about it doesn't make it easy ever. Yeah. And we relate in that way, but you through it all have always had a focus for, yes, you recognize you have insecurities, whatever we all do, but you take care of yourself. And there were times you're like, you know, I'm stepping back from exercising right now because it's too much. Like I'm going to take walks right now. Like before your wedding, it was a different phase. You know, after your wedding, it was a different phase. Like you are so good with being in tune with yourself. I was honestly so impressed because I, I used to be a person that I was like, oh, I have this event coming up. Okay, let me be, you know, restrictive and work out and like all of those things. I used to call you about that. And you would be like, don't. If you want to eat pasta, eat pasta. If you want to like, just don't do it. And so I... I didn't honestly like leading up to my wedding. I thought that I was going to be like this crazy person just like working out two times a day and like all this stuff. And then I was like, why does that matter? Like, yes, I was like, yes, I want to like look back at my wedding photos and like be happy and all that stuff. But like, that's my wedding is not about what I look like. My wedding is about me marrying the love of my life and like starting my life with somebody. Let's just, how's he doing? He's good. He's uh, working right now. He's writing songs. We've started uh, writing music together, which has been really fun. My dream. (laughs) That's the best news. You didn't tell me that. Oh, yeah. Well, I needed something, some sort of surprise in here. I'm so excited. Um, Yeah, a few people commented because yesterday I went on a live with a friend of mine and I uh, sang one of my original songs um, on the live. And I was literally like this the whole time because I don't, I don't perform my original music How did I like miss ever. That? It's oh. still up. It's my friend's um, live. Oh, I'm watching it's, it right after it's, this. It's Renee Blair. So okay. um, my friend Megan sang a song, Renee sang a song, and then I sang a song. And Paul played guitar for me. Um, but you know, I think that it, there's just like so many aspects of my life, and I think that kind of along your lines where you were kind of talking about like your journey into fitness I feel like there are so many parallels with different parts of my life like whether it be me starting music or you know me in the acting world or me with my fitness journey like there are so many like roadblocks that you could either stand behind or move through and I feel like I I unknowingly moved through so many difficult roadblocks going into my acting career that somehow seem harder to move through with something like my music or my Mm -hmm. fitness journey or things like that. But knowing that I was strong enough or empowered enough or like whatever it was in me, like, I don't even really know. I I guess it was my, um, my need to prove people wrong. I disagree in me. I I know it's a lot more than that, but at the same time, like there is there's so much rejection in being an actor yes, where yeah. you're going into a room and it's like, I already have those thoughts yeah. in my head anyways of my own insecurities being like, I'm not this enough or I'm not this enough. But then when you go to an audition, there's actually somebody there who's like, yeah. you're not blonde or you're not tall enough or you're not thin enough or you're not, you're oh not gosh. this enough to get this role. Yeah. And for some reason that never bothers me really, because I'm like, there's, 200 million reasons why I'm not getting this role. Yeah. But you know what? I'm going to leave this room, this audition, and I'm going to go to the next audition and I'm going to wind up proving to you who mm-hmm. didn't want to cast me on why you were wrong. Do you also think, and, and I know I've talked about this before, on like a deeper level that you know, you have that real true confidence because you are in tune with who you are and you know that what's meant for you is always going to be for you. Oh yeah, I say that. Like that's, your whole that's life like, journey. That's like one of my whole mantras in my head. I'm like, what if it's meant to be mine? It already is. Yeah, no one can take that, and I think that's a huge something I love so much about you. You are such a true friend, 
you champion me, you're happy you for too. me. You too. And, and I think we are for each other. And I think that's so important. And I think it's not, there isn't a place for jealousy. And it's just not, it's, it's just not a productive use of any energy because I truly believe that there is enough room at the top for everyone and someone else's success in no way could ever take away from yours or yeah. mine or hers or anyone. So it's like to meet people like you who I had, I struggled growing up, even in my adult life, finding friends that were like real and true. And so connecting with women like you who are so, you know, like-minded and hardworking and just understand that like, we are all queens and we are all killing it. And that is, you know, not getting that audition has nothing to do with you. You yeah. will get exactly what's meant for you. And it's about working hard and staying authentic yeah. And you are, and you always have been. Well, now I do have a question because obviously we're talking about like pressures of industry and, you know, of the acting industry, you know, and modeling the and all that stuff. Coming. Like that's so, that's so, you know, you, you, you put pressure on yourself based on aesthetics in the acting world, in the modeling world, in that world. But like you said, because the fitness world has been so prepackaged based on aesthetic, do you find that you feel for Kelsey an added pressure to maintain a certain aesthetic or maintain a certain physique based on the fact that you are in yeah. fitness and you are a role model in that world? Um, the answer is no today. Mm -hmm. That answer would have been different even like in a year and a half ago. I think it's one of those things that's always, again, like in, in the insecurities, it's coming to my mind. And when I first, I never really had a point where it's like, oh, I'm switching careers. I'm going to be a trainer. It happened very organically. And I could have never fathomed having like a platform or having, you know, people that are looking to me or like having a community. I, I couldn't have imagined it. And so it's not that I fell into it. I worked so hard, but it all happened and it was nothing that I ever planned for or even hoped for. I just didn't think about it. And so finding myself in this place, and this is something I've never really shared, but I've dealt with an immense amount of insecurity and like imposter syndrome, just feeling like, sorry, like who the hell am I to like do any of this? Or like, like, yes, I'm a certified professional. Like, yes, I know my stuff about fitness. Like I really care about what I'm trying to say. And I'm doing this because I feel like it's, just, I need to, I need to try to help women. But then I'm in these situations and I'm like, whoa, like it should be anybody else but me, right? So that's in creeping in my head. But I can confidently say that through practicing, you know, that kindness towards myself and self-love and, and through a lot of meditation and moving my body, I am now at a place I exercise and I guess I maintain my physique, my training and nutrition, I do it as it is like my self-love, like mm -hmm. that is my therapy. That is my outlet, the way that I train and eat. And therefore the way that I maintain my body, it, I don't have peak seasons on season, off seasons. Like it's pretty much year round. I live and do the same things because that is how I care for myself and honor myself and fuel myself. And, and I'm proud. I'm proud because I worked really hard to, to yeah, shed that and decide, no, I'm not going to take on the pressure that because I'm a trainer who's well known, I have to be super lean all the time, or I have yeah. to look a certain way all the time. I, I don't. And that's yeah. something that was very intentional. Well, and I mean, and I also think that like, you're a prime example of somebody that like, you didn't just like get the body you have right now in a few months, you know, this no. is years, <laughs> no. years and years of work. And I think that that's, you know, everybody's just like, we live in a, a society where everybody just wants that like quick fix. Yeah. And it's like, sorry, that's not really how that happens. <laughs> no. And you want to know why I want to talk about something that a conversation we had months ago. I don't know if you'll remember this, but we were talking about this and about like the pressures in our industries and everything. And the point that it's unfortunate, like why, why do women feel like, or think not that they need to look a certain way even, but that their own body. So say you're not comparing yourself to the world or to the beauty standards or the others, but 
there's so much comparison to yourself or like you want to be how you looked in college or in high school, or you want to fit into those old jeans. And it's like, you as a human are meant to grow and expand and change. And there's so many versions of you throughout your life and that's celebrated and it's great. So why on earth do we think we should be carrying the same physical body with us throughout like our bodies. And I've posted so much about this. Like our bodies are not statues. They are meant to fluctuate and change and shift. And especially as a woman, if you go through the journey of motherhood, if you, or pregnancy, if you like your body is not meant to be how it was in college. I and just, it's, it's, I literally <sighs> just saw a post of um, somebody, I think it was like Kylie Jenner posted something from a couple years ago and somebody commented under it and said, she was skinnier here. And then somebody goes, yeah, she looked better. And then she commented and she goes, I birthed a child since then. Dude, good <laughs> And for it was her. just like, I was just like, amen. Like, and it's whether just... or not, like you just growth and puberty and life fluctuations, like a, a, our bodies are always going to be fluctuating. And that's part of the Well, and it's also it. like, as you learn, like, I mean, I was probably like thinner when I was in high school and stuff. And I was playing sports all the time. But I also wasn't like doing proper nutrition yeah, and like all of those things. Mm-hmm. And I'm healthier now. And I think my body looks way better now than it has probably ever Amen. And that's just it. It's the whole focus with health and fitness should truly be about health, you know? Yeah. And I think fitness is about health. Health is mental, emotional, and physical. If you yeah. can really understand those two truths, then you use that as a baseline for your fitness journey and you will always get your goals faster, like last longer. It's not, there's so much to your point of the transformations. Like I post on my page, I share member journeys and stories, but ever since I began sharing them in, I do not throw up a picture. Yeah. I plead people to swipe over and read what the person has to say, because I'm not posting those because of their physical change. Yeah. That is part of it. And that is the way that they are choosing to illustrate their progress. And I call it power progress and the programs are power, but their journey and most of their journey. And you have attested to this. Every woman has attested to this. It is what you can see is a very small, small representation of the growth and the changes that yes. they have gone through. And I want to celebrate, I want to celebrate that, yeah. you know, and that's, that's what it's about. It's about learning to care for your health. Yeah. And, and now know. what do you, I know you talk about it sometimes, but like for me, like I do find that sometimes, you know, if I'm on my health and fitness and I'm like doing my best and I'm, you know, taking care of myself and I'm, you know, being healthy and stuff. And then I have a day where I go out with my friends and I'm drinking and, you know, eating like shit and whatever. And then I wake up the next day with that kind of guilt brain, even Mm -hmm. though I know I shouldn't feel guilty about like the thing that I ate or whatever. But then when that turns into, you know, I, I fall in sometimes where I'm like, oh, I've been doing really well. I've been doing really well with my nutrition. Like I could just let it, I could let it fall off. I could, I could have that thing. And then that turns into like four days of just like having that thing that I wanted or drinking that wine. I'm like, especially in quarantine, I'll be honest, quarantine. I'm like, I'm going to eat cereal. Cause I want cereal and I'm going to eat grilled great. cheese I cause it. I want a grilled cheese. And yeah. I honestly in quarantine have not felt guilty about it at all. It's Good. for some reason, you're winning. it's for some reason, like when I'm not in quarantine and I think it's because I'm like working and when I'm working, I'm trying to maintain for a mm-hmm. thing I get it. that yeah. then you fall in. But I know that it's not just me that deals. Everybody deals with that kind yeah. of guilt. I've brain. been super relaxed with my training and eating, honestly, in the last month, maybe more than in a very long time. Um, but I, I think, you know, you said fall off that I think the whole point is to, understand and start shifting that mindset that there's no such thing as falling off. I hate it when people compare their fitness journeys to like, it's not a race. It's a marathon. It's not a marathon either. Like this is truly a lifestyle and your health is attached to your life. Mm -hmm. If you're alive, you have health. And so your decisions are impacting your health, whether or not you're aware of it. People are like, Oh, I've fell off my fitness journey six months ago, or I'm going to start my fitness journey. It's like, no, no, no. It's going all the time. It's going all the time. 
So just, you can ditch this pressure of like trying to get somewhere or, you know, it's, it's not, it's not about a race to be run. You know, it's really yeah. about understanding that all there is is now. And what are you going to do today to care for yourself mm -hmm. and to love yourself and to just be present and enjoy this life and fitness and health should be about allowing you to be your best self and do whatever it is you are passionate about. It should not be an added stress or something that you feel guilty about. If you fell off, there are going to be seasons where you exercise more consecutively. And then there are going to be seasons where you're not, that doesn't mean you've fallen anywhere. Yeah. Your priorities are a little bit different. I will always advocate the importance of moving your body. If you're healthy and able to, because that's important for your health, it's like brushing your teeth. You just do things to take care of yourself, but the stress of, of, you know, really going hard for a certain amount of time, it's just not necessary. And it's kind of, it's a mute point, you know, there's no such thing as yeah. falling off. And I think once you can grasp that, then you can let go of that guilt a little bit and realize like, like you said for, before your wedding, like I'm just living my life. I'm enjoying my life. I'm yeah. like, taking care of myself. I think it was honestly, myself. it was honestly like a blessing in disguise though, that I was also working leading up to my wedding because like, I didn't really have, I didn't really like have the time, time to, to stress over. About that. Yeah. I didn't have <laughs> the like... time to think like, I literally was just like, ah, I'm going to get a wedding planner and she'll tell me that like, do you want white napkins or, <laughs> you know, pink ones? And like, it's just going to be what it's going to be. Yeah. Like as long as I like have Paul to marry at the end of the aisle and like my family there and my yeah. friends, like I'm good. <laughs> yeah. You have your priorities straight. And that's, that's, I think what, what it comes down to. And, I think it's so important to just make yourself a priority. Yeah. And that's, I think, I know it's hard for moms. It's hard for women, particularly all of the guilt and stress, but it's, it gets overcomplicated. And it yeah. doesn't mean to, I think the number one rule should be giving yourself grace because I know we've talked about this so many times and I've said it so many times, but nothing that you could have eaten could be, as unhealthy for you as beating yourself down with guilt about food. Mm. It, what matters. I, I said the other day, just kind of ranted after Easter. I, I hate the posts that are just like, this is how many, ca what you have to do to burn off this or, Oh, day after holiday, I'm going to go burn off all these calories. It's no, it should not be about that. It should be like, sure. If you want to throw away your chocolate, if you don't eat another one, like whatever, what's important is how is your mental relationship with food? Yeah. Like, is it healthy? Well, cause I always say I was, I, I actually was really candid with Haley about this in our conversation the other day where like, I've never had an, I've never had an eating disorder in terms of, you know, throwing up or restricting myself. And, you know, I've, I've never suffered from any of that, but I do think that in and of itself, having an obsession with, with what you're putting into your body in terms of like beating yourself think. up about it. That's not, that's, that's mm -hmm. a, that's a disorder in it, in and of itself. Yeah. And, and I, I and, and I'm culprit to having done that in the past being like, okay, well, like I had pasta and I had wine last night. So like today I need to like, just eat salad or like, you know, yeah. like I, you have those unhealthy talks with yourself, but it's like, you know, thankfully there are people like you who are, are advocates for health and fitness who are also advocating to, to kind of stop that talk and to stop yeah. speaking to yourself in that way. And, and that you don't, need to have those conversations with yourself in order to, I mean, even you just saying, you know, that it's, it's not, I've fallen off, which is something that I always think of when mm. I'm like, wow, I'm not, you know, I'm not able to take care of myself in the way that I'm used to right now in this time of mm -hmm. quarantine, I've fallen off, but I'm like, no, I haven't. I'm still like, no, doing power at home and working out and like walking the dog with Paul and, you know, like I'm still yeah, moving and, my body every day. Yes. And that's, I think it's so important right now. Everyone is ever like, this is affecting everyone on different levels in different ways, but globally, this is affecting everyone. And for some, like, uh, like so much so, and it's, it's tragic and it's hard and it's tough. And to, 
expect of yourself to be thriving and have this new home routine and just like write, go write your new book or go start your business. Like you're lazy if you're not doing something right now. That is insane. It's yeah. insane. Like you are, we are coping as a global family with trauma and energy is heavy. And maybe it's you personally, maybe it's loved ones. Yeah. Maybe whatever it is, like there's a lot that all of us are processing. And what I think is most important for your health and fitness during this time is number, number one, to give yourself grace. Yeah. And to understand that it's okay if you haven't gotten it figured out yet, if you don't have a routine right now, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And I kind of spoke about this on IGTV, but I was realizing like the one time in my life after I had Anderson, when I was able to finally start healing and like get on this whole path was the first time in my life I had zero routine. My whole life was turned upside down. I was used to being working full time as an interior designer, busy on the go all the time, like really driven, like everything, you know, so, so busy all the time to being literally stuck at home in our one bedroom basement apartment, completely sedentary. I had no idea what I was doing, taking care of a child. I didn't know how to take care of a baby. Like no one teaches you this when you're pregnant. Yeah. I, mean, I was just, it was so overwhelming. I didn't know, I, I didn't recognize myself. I didn't, I feel like myself, it was just like craziness. And I know that that is how so many people are feeling right now. Their life got dumped upside down. Yeah. In, in what seems like the blink of an eye. And all of a sudden you feel, find yourself in the midst of this chaos and to expect yourself to just like be positive and happy and just shut out all like, no, you need to process what's happening. Yeah. And when I was able to shed the expectations that I was supposed to be thriving as a new mom and just like getting, you know, and just realizing, no, this is where I am. This yeah. is how I'm feeling. And just accept myself and then take the variance of any moment or every day and focus on one thing. I want people to focus on one thing. I want people to focus every day on finding one way to care for their health. Mm -hmm. Exercise or meditate, drink all of your water. If nothing else, it's like, focus on that self-care that self-love and the routine will come the normalcy yeah. will kind of fall into place but to put the pressure on yourself is crazy and we just don't need it so just give yourself grace and let yourself feel all the things yeah you know I yeah. think it's so important well I want to open uh I want to open the rest of the conversation up to um anybody watching if you have questions to just go down to the like little question mark at the bottom and submit them. And while you are submitting the questions, I need Kelsey to talk uh -oh. about her <laughs> art. So oh. I was FaceTiming <laughs> with you the other day and you were like showing me your Nobody knows beautiful... about this. Nobody. Nobody knows about this. And I am yeah. sorry, but I'm about to share this with the whole world. Oh, the fact <laughs> she was showing me around her beautiful house, giving me a tour. And I was like, wow, that art is really cool. And she goes, yeah, I, I did that. <laughs> I'm like, can you be good at any, can you be good at anything? I else? can't sing. like, you know, I can't. It's, I mean, my, that's, it's my biggest that's dream. That's not but... true. You were just singing before we got on this live, you were singing <laughs> Alicia Keys in your bathroom and you can okay, hold well, a note. No. Okay. But Kelsey, for those of you who don't know, Kelsey, you went to school for interior design, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, like, she has these beautiful paintings that are, like, these abstract Thank art. You. And I'm like, that's, like, all I want in my house. And I literally was like, can I'll you paint, paint you one? one? Yeah. Oh, my God. I told you I really? would. Yeah, so it oh kind of God. started, I took art classes in high school and college. Is there any way, college, are, you but... near, are you near one of your paintings that you yeah. can show? I can, I can, I can so they're just like setting out because we don't have furniture in some places i don't know if i can switch this so like what i painted that one probably three years ago like um, what i painted it for ryan it's yeah it's just an abstract but this is the one that you saw this is the one that i painted just like last week and it's just therapy for me like when i really don't know like much. i don't even like, I love that you're just like, I don't know. I just like do it. And I'm like, I don't, I would never even know where to begin. How do you begin to make something like that? So I got to say though, Anderson stepped on it when I was showing him and he felt so bad. I started crying and I was like, bad, like it made it perfect. And so like, 
he is so proud now. He says that we paint, mommy and him painted it together. And <laughs> I said that was the perfect touch that I couldn't have done. So anyway. it's literally <laughs> incredible. I'm obsessed. And there's like dirt in it from my yard. I get really sentimental when I paint. So it's like, I love very that. symbolic, I guess. But anyway, I can't believe you said that. Literally, I've never talked about that ever, ever. <laughs> Well, I'm so happy that you just shared that with everybody because it's amazing. This back um, on a little tripod. We are going to look up at people's questions. Like, oh, I'm um, nervous. Why? You're nervous? Yeah, I kind of get nervous for questions. I don't know. We'll pick. Like, what we'll pick up <laughs> just be nice. Some. We'll pick some fun ones. All right. Okay. Are there any plans for future power meetups? Oh, I'm probably going to burst into tears, but yes, 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 absolutely. hundred thousand percent. Yes. Traveling and doing those live sessions is I've always said it's my favorite part of what I get to do is actually going and like hugging you guys and meeting as many people as I can and having real conversations. And now with everything that's happening, I've been, I was always grateful for that, but I'm telling you like when I am able again to do that, yeah, I'm never yeah. going to take that for granted. Like, we will be doing as many as possible. Um, ba, ba, ba. I'm, like, trying to pick ones that we didn't really uh, touch on. This is interesting. What has been the most impactful work tactic when it comes to your success? Ooh, I like that work tactic. Can I say two? Go ahead. Um, first and foremost, authenticity. I, I learned really early on that I'm never going to, I might never be the best at anything that I do, right? Like I will never be the best in the world at like getting the biggest muscles or I don't know, like whatever it is. But when you stop worrying about that and start, start being fiercely your best, that is when success comes and magic happens. And when you can take your focus off of worrying what other people think or how other people are going to receive your work and just truly authentically create that, I think that has been the key for me. And then the yeah. second um, would be gratitude. I think it's vastly underestimated the power of gratitude and adapting that attitude. There's always going to be people that offend you or hurt you or don't see you or disagree with you. There's going to be losses. There's going to be failures, setbacks, but there's always lessons and you can start to see the lessons and start to grow from all of the hard things if you're able to be grateful. Yeah. So I'd say that. I love that. Um, I got a DM uh, yesterday with somebody asking me, what's your favorite snack? And I just don't know why I felt like that was fun. <laughs> it kind of fluctuates, I think, depending on the time of the month, <laughs> depending on the season. Always, though, fresh fruit is always for me. I love it. I love it all. All kinds of fruit. I know. I'm always bananas, like actually. You don't like bananas? They're okay. Like if they have almond butter or if they're in a smoothie, it's fine. But like I wouldn't just eat a raw banana per se, you know? They're more for baking for me. They're like an ingredient, not like a snack. Honestly, but. I laughed <laughs> so hard the other day because somebody posted a meme that was like, I don't know what it is about this quarantine that has everybody making banana bread. And it's oh, so it's true. Because <laughs> yeah. like I also it's like. good. I Put some chocolate chips in there. I, I don't like I don't ever make banana bread but for some reason during quarantine I was like oh this banana's going bad let me make banana bread <laughs> I think I have to maybe I'll whip that out today maybe I'll try that join the club um what about you what's your favorite snack my favorite snack uh I mean it's it's different it depends on the day because like sometimes like, I'm trying to do this thing where I, like, listen to what my body wants. Because, like, there's some days where my body's like, I want fresh fruit. And then there's other days where my body's like, I want a bowl of honeycombs. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it, fl it does fluctuate. So yeah. I think, yeah. Um, but I would say, I'm, like, trying to think, what am I eating most? Um, I've been making this kale salad that mm -hmm. I'm really obsessed with. That's, like, my, like, easy snack. And I, I put, like, a like, vinaigrette on it? Yeah, so I make a vinaigrette out of olive oil 
some balsamic vinegar, a little Dijon. And then I have this hot sauce that I got at Trader Joe's that I sprinkle a little bit in and I whisk Girl. that together. But it's chopped kale. Um, okay, now pump- we all need you to post it. Just post yeah. this. Yeah. I did post it, but I'll post it again. Um, yeah, chopped, it. chopped kale, golden raisins, pumpkin seeds. Um, can you have pine nuts? No, no, no. So don't have the, don't, don't, don't do the pine nuts. Um, and then you could add like chicken or I sometimes Mm. add like farro or quinoa or something to it. So a grain. I love it. Um, another question, how do you recommend gradually starting the workout routine? That's a great question. I think it's most important when you're starting out first of all, to, again, always be kind to yourself. Don't pick like my power programs are kind of broken up into 12 week. Like each program is about 12 weeks because they kind of increase in difficulty and they build, but you don't want to get started on a program and think, Oh, okay, 12 weeks. And then the first day you miss a day, you're like, I failed. You can't go in that mentality. So for me, when I was starting out, I wonder what I say it's what, what the key to success in beginning a workout program or journey is to take it one day at a time. Don't think about, and it, it might seem a little counterintuitive because I know most people are like, focus on your end goal. And that's true in a way, but I've found that in daily success, you need to make like a daily goal. Yeah. Seriously, right out. Like, day at drink, a time. Drink eight cups of water, do your power session. Those are your two big goals, right? If you can work those into your crazy life, then feel so proud of yourself at the end of the day. Be stoked on it. Yeah. And then when the first time comes that you miss one, because you will, no one's ever, you're not ever going to be perfect. So just, again, get over that thinking that you've fallen off. You haven't. You just get up the next day and it's a whole new day. You're going to focus. Yeah. You're going to do your two things. Make it really simple one day at a time. I think yeah. that is. And then before you know it, and honestly, it becomes easier. Honestly, I think that that's my favorite thing. Because, like, I'm not just, like, blowing smoke, you guys. Like, power is, like, the workout that I do. Like, that's, like, what I do. And I... I remember I had, I actually, when I did finish 12 weeks of power at home, cause I was doing that at the gym in my apartment in Montreal. Um, I was like, I, I got to come home for like two months and I was like, I think that now I want to do like power because like my body is craving wanting to like use mm-hmm. equipment in the gym. But it's like, I think that that is so much of what I read in women's comments about the program and everything is like, I feel like as a woman, when you walk into a gym, it's like there's like the weightlifting section that as a woman, yeah. it's like it's there's like some, it's intimidating. And there's kind of like a vibe that's like, hey, um, this is just for dudes, you know, and I love so getting to I love getting to like be by the Smith machine and some dude yes. is like doing his like squats and stuff and I'm like can I have that when you're done yes it's It's so good it's just power has given me so much more confidence in and I think that that's a lot of what's overwhelming and especially to go back to somebody who is kind of moving into their fitness journey and everything and wanting to go to the gym and not knowing where to begin I think that something like power and and every program on the sweat app it just gives you the confidence to know what you're doing to like go there and be like, this is what I'm doing. It's yes. laid out for you in, in always, such a great way. Yeah. And I think it's, I had like a crazy, amazing, like personal moment with this. When I launched Power 4.0 in November, I held a little event in LA and um, we brought girls from all over the country who I just said, I want one thing. I don't care if they have social media, I don't care anything. I just want them to have been doing for power for a long time. I just want to meet some of these women in real life and hear their stories and journeys. And so we did. And on the last day, there was a group of like 10 women and I'd never met them all, but I loved them all so much. And I'm training them through a live workout and I'm calling out the exercises and they're just, because I knew all of their stories, you know, and how they literally learned how to weight train and learned how to exercise with power. I'm standing there and I'm watching them and their form is right and they're killing it. And I was just like, I just started crying. I'm very emotional, but I was like, (laughs) oh my God, like it works. Cause I always say like the sweat app, the reason that I wanted so badly to put my programs in that platform is because it's the best way you can actually learn how to exercise, how to weight train correctly with right form. It's like a personal trainer in your pocket. It's the best I can do without being with you. And to see these women who, I mean, I could talk about them each individually for an hour, but who have taken that tool that I 
worked so hard to put out into the world and taken it and they've learned like yeah. it, it worked it's real and it was just so it was so cool it was so crazy yeah like uh, I mean and I think that that's like just it's it's another thing that the sweat app and you know Kayla's BBG and everything like it's it's like 30 minutes you can literally you can do 30 minutes you yes, have you 30 it. minutes in your day. Like the amount of times where I'm like sitting and twiddling my thumbs in this yeah, quarantine. Scrolling social media, watching Scrolling TV. social media, yeah. watching TV. I'm just like, all right. Like sometimes I like have to, when I'm like, I really don't want to work out. I have to sit there and be like, you're going to be bored in an hour, not knowing what to do. And you're not going to regret, like you're going to be so no. happy after you did it. And that's like one thing that like Paul, anytime I'm like complaining and I'm like, I don't want to work out. My husband's like, you're going to be so happy you did it. Just yes. do it. Love him. Yeah, like the power, pro my power program. He is so scared session. to do power with Oh, me, has he not tried it? I no. challenge you, Paul. He's so scared. I challenge you personally. <laughs> um, but no, power at home is only like 30 to 40 minutes for an entire session. But even if you are that struggling new mom or someone who truly is having a hard time to find 35 minutes, there are quick workouts in there. I have power challenges. I have body part specific workouts that are literally 10 to 15 minutes. Like you yeah. can pare down your power session. The app makes it all so easy. So yes, like, yeah, move your body. If you're able to move the body for yourself, for your health, you'll feel better. Yeah. Um, I like this question because you and I talk about this all the time. Where do you want to travel when the world is safe again? Uh, um, where for don't me? I want to travel? <laughs> I know. Where don't I want to travel? For me, um, my husband and I were supposed to take our honeymoon to Italy uh, oh, yeah. in June, oh, girl. which we've now uh, had to cancel. Um, and oh, it's fine girl. because we could always reschedule. Um, but I was really looking forward to that. It. So when the world is safe again, that is the first place that I'm going. And then probably to visit my family in Portugal. Amazing. Yeah, for me, I always wanted to travel my whole life, but I never really thought or understood how I could. Like, I, I, you know, I, I just, I will never take for granted being able to travel. Like, growing up, our family vacations were we drive to Southern, I live in Utah, we drive to California, you know, camp on the beach. My parents took us to Hawaii, and it was so incredible. It was the biggest deal, and it was the best trip. I still remember it. But being the way that I've been able to travel and meet so many women around the world in the last three years is something that like, I, I'll never complain about jet lag, about anything. Like it's such a blessing and a gift to see other cultures and meet people from other places and all of it. And I think I, I was supposed to be in New York last week. Um, and I'm really excited to getting back there. I always look forward to that. And then probably Singapore, yeah, yes. I was there about a year ago, and I really, yeah, I'm hoping to do another power session there. That was a really special place for me. Yeah, my uh, my husband is in the band uh, Boys Like Girls, which you know, yeah. um, but oh, yeah. they were supposed to right now be doing a tour in Australia, and oh, then no. they were and then they were going to Singapore, to Indonesia to uh the philippines it's not canceled though it's just postponed right so it's postponed right now until september but you know yeah who yeah, who, knows. who knows what's gonna happen but if they go and all is okay the last place that they're um going to is jakarta indonesia wow. so i'm like i'm like maybe i hop on a plane you and go to indonesia to and then we go to bali maybe wow. Yeah. Why not? Australia. I'm that's like, amazing. Yeah. Australia is like my second home. I miss oh it. Oh my God. I've never been and I'm dying to go. Oh, crazy. Yeah. yeah. We, well, I mean, it's not crazy. It's not like a normal place to go if you're from the U S but I, because sweat it's a very is long, Australia. it's a very long yeah. flight. It's not an easy <laughs> travel, but it's, worth I'm, it. I'm, uh, I'm terrified of flying. I'll give you tips. Yeah. We can if I'm, through if it. I'm, can... if I'm on a plane, I need uh, like, not if I'm on a plane that's longer than six hour flight, I have to be laying down. Okay. Yeah. I get Save to up. go business yeah. class, then you can sleep. Yeah. But but the other but it's thing worth is it. like sometimes when I've gone to Portugal and I've been I like just fly coach, 
there aren't the whole plane's not full. So then you find that like middle row. Yes. The you middle get aisle yes. row. Yeah, that's the best. <laughs> yeah. Um and then let's pick one more. Perfect. Ba, 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 ba. I like want to find You're a fine. good one. I guess let's let's talk about this. When you don't have access to a gym, can you still do power? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is exactly why I wrote Power at Home. And obviously I I wanted I planned on writing and releasing Power at Home from the day that I released Power because my personal fitness journey started at home. And also I just know that not all women can or want to train in the gym. It's not practical yeah. for some people. They just have no desire, some others. And what I never would have known is that we'd be here now and we can't, and all of us need to be training at home. So yes, power at home is a little bit different than power. It is not easier. It is not a regression. It's not modified program. It is, I made it my mission to make the best programs for their respective environments. So power at home is just as challenging, a little bit different, but just as intense as power. They just are really designed to maximize your time and effort spent exercising, whether you're at home or in the gym. So absolutely is the answer yeah. to that. Yay. All right. And then we'll end it off on what are three things because even though we talked about traveling, what are three things that you are looking forward to doing when all of this is over? You go first. <laughs> okay. Um, I am looking forward to seeing my family and friends. Yeah. Uh, to being able to hug people. Because I'm a hugger. Um, and to be able to like move through the world without fear. Ooh, wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. Like, I just I feel like right now we're all kind of walking around and everyone's wearing masks and it is kind of like this anxiety inducing, scary looking thing mm -hmm. that's happening. Um, and I try my best when I'm like walking around and I see people, if Paul and I go on a walk on the street and, you know, smile. you're across, yeah. yeah, to smile There's at people. There's no reason because, to be scared. I mean, yeah, I don't want us to like live in a world where we're afraid of each other. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's huge. Um, I mean, of course, I would agree. I cannot wait to hug. Yeah, my, my friends and family, my parents, it was my mom's birthday yesterday. I um, saw that. Yeah, and she was like my absolute best friend growing up, my mom and my sisters. And it was so strange. She lives near to me, which is a blessing. But like, I went to her house and like put her gift on her porch and like stood 10 feet back. And, you know, we, we chatted, but I, it was, it's so hard not, you know, not to hug people. So hugging my friends and family, traveling, doing my live power sessions, hands down hundred um, percent. And then probably concerts. I love yeah, I, I, for Christmas, I am um, going to the Taylor Swift Lover Fest. I'm a big Taylor Swift fan, and I'm just really hoping that that happens or when it happens, you know, I'll, I will not take for granted, you know, doing those community, it, whether it's a little concert in the park in my little town or fireworks on the 4th of July or just all of those ways yeah. that we gather. There's so much power in community. And what's been cool is just seeing the power of community, how you don't need to be in person to be powerful. But it is definitely, I just, I won't take that for granted. You know, I won't take for granted sitting in a cafe enjoying my coffee or date night with Rye or fireworks with the city or a concert, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love that. And I love you. And uh, I'm so grateful to have you in my life as I know that there are so many women who are continually inspired by you and are so grateful that you're in their life as well. And um, thanks for doing my live with me. I just love you. <laughs> you I just, just love you. Day, girl. You're amazing. Thank you so, so, so much.
I love you. And I'll be FaceTiming you soon, I'm sure. <laughs> Perfect. And thank you guys, everybody who tuned in. Yes, thank you guys. So Everyone Mwah. stay safe and healthy. Yes, stay safe, you guys. Bye. Bye.